Welcome everybody to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. I'm really excited because today it's going to be a real special show. We're in a beautiful location in Wyoming, hole in the wall. We're at Willow Creek Ranch, and what we're going to be doing is fly fishing for brown trout in a very small creek. This is an absolutely pristine little stream, and it runs right through the ranch. We're going to be talking about the tactics you need to know about small stream fishing, and we're going to be talking about this area and how fabulous it is. It's going to be a great show. I know you're going to enjoy it. Stay with us. One of my favorite ways to fly fish is on small streams. Though the fish are generally not large, I love the inherent difficulties that accompany this type of fly fishing. Best of all, small streams tend to be incredibly beautiful ecosystems that are vibrant with life. We're fishing at Willow Creek Ranch, which is located near Hole in the Wall, Wyoming. This ranch is over 50,000 acres in size and features incredible natural beauty combined with historically significant sites, such as a red wall, and the location where Butch Cassidy's Wild Bunch roamed. On our first morning, we drove to Buffalo Creek, which runs through part of the ranch. Everywhere you look, the scenery is dominated by the red cliffs and ridges, which are breathtakingly beautiful, especially in the early and late daylight. I especially like the interaction between the ranch animals and the landscape. I really felt like I was in an old Western movie. One of the Willow Creek ranch hands drove us out and gave us some information about the patterns to use and where the fish typically hold. Joining me today is Richard Swanson, who hails from New York State. Rich likes to come to the ranch annually to take in the great fishing and scenery. He says it's his favorite way to decompress from the stresses of being a corporate lawyer. Like me, he's a small stream fanatic, enjoying both the intimacy and the beauty of these ecosystems. Okay, now, Colin, the fish are lying underneath that bank. It's going to be very, with the weeds overhanging, it's going to be very difficult to get your fly in. Let's take a test of the wind. The wind is going to blow it in there, so you're going to want to get down low and kind of sidearm it in there underneath that tall grass hanging over. You'll catch him there. There, I told you, I told you, very good, very good. Outstanding. Oh, geez, we've got another scrapper. No, notice how cloudy the pool is now. As soon as you do catch one, they really, really uh, cause a lot of turbidity. Nice going. No, oh, he's an, oh, he's a fat one. Very good. You see the weeds wrapped around them? That's another hazard that we have uh, fishing these spring creeks. Look, how's that for a spring, cre spring creek brown trout? That's a nice one. Oh, first cast, I got him. Very first cast, which is nice because I did not have to go all the way to the bend. I got him right at the beginning of the pool. I'm going to be able to fish the rest of the pool and take the rest out of here. Look at him. Another one came to visit. Look at that. Look at that scrapper. Oh, 
Okay, how about that? Hopper in the upper left. Nice spring creek. Brown trout from Wyoming. There's more in that pool yet. On small streams, there is generally not a lot of invertebrate life. Consequently, the trout must be very opportunistic. Terrestrials, especially grasshoppers, provide trout with a substantive meal. Throughout the summer, grasshoppers are continuously falling into the stream. It's not long before they're picked off by the ravenous browns that inhabit Buffalo Creek. For trout, wind can often play in their favor, knocking big hoppers off the grass into the water. This is why we use big hopper patterns. Got him. Oh, nice going. He's a scrapper, though. I might be wrong here. He's not that little. No, he's not a brown trout. Trying to keep my reel out of the mud. My hand's wet. Very nice. Well, you called that one right, Colin. Spending a day on small streams, especially in a location as beautiful as this, is beyond descriptive words. Every bend in the stream, every hanging cliff and view down the valley is a treat for the eyes. Often the scenery seems to supersede the fishing, but this is why I love small stream fly fishing. It is such a personal and intimate experience with nature. I spoke to Gene V, who is the owner operator of the ranch, and he talked a little about what people can experience here. Here at the Willow Creek, we're surrounded by peace, silence, stars are bright at night, beautiful red wall during the day. It changes color many times each day. With snow in the winter, it's a totally different setting. At night, you can see more stars than you ever imagined. When the wind blows fiercely, it's awesome. When there's silence, it also is awesome. It's so peaceful and content. After a few days and all the stress drains away, you don't want to leave. We have not only good fishing and hunting and guest ranch activities, but we have an abundance of real Western history. We have the Sioux Indian Trail, which crosses the ranch. It later became a an army marching road and a stagecoach route. The Buffalo to Armento stage used that same route. We have uh, the old foundations of Fort Houck. It's called a fort, it wasn't. It was more a road ranch where you changed horses, uh, took a meal, spent the night uh, while traveling on the stage. We have Indian petroglyphs, drawings and artwork in the caves. We have uh, uh, wonderful pioneer history with uh, the old homestead sites and cabins. Um, lots of cowboy culture. We'll catch him. I want to see a close-up. Oh, ho! got him. Nice going. Yeah. 
Yes, he did. Nice take. You get off? Yeah. Oh, boy. Maybe the bird scared them. Oh, I got one! Oh, I got one! Never say never! Never say never! Oh, look at that big one take off. Do you see that? There were others in here. Yeah, he's a feisty one. Small but feisty. There you go, buddy. There you go. Sometimes the light works in your favor and you can spot a feeding trout at a distance. This was one of those rare moments when everything came together well. Oh, oh, you got him first fish, first cast. Very good. And he's a big one. He is a big one. Nice going. First cast. You get a light when it works. <laughs> Don't work for me. Yeah, very good. Yes, it is. Yeah, can't help that. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? You can just walk by these banks, see these fish, throw to them, and boom! First cast. There you go, mister. Look at, look at that. He's looking for his under... There he is, in the undercut bank. Colin, that was just perfect. Right from start to finish. Boy, oh boy. You just laid it right in the right spot. Nice going. Stealth is of critical importance when fly fishing on small streams. Trout in these systems are extremely wary of predators. They have to worry about everything from eagles to raccoons. That is why we must take great care to hide our movements and our form. Try to keep low and move slowly. The higher you are, the more likely you will be spotted. Crouch or even go down on your knees to move into casting position. Ensure you move slowly and deliberately. Heavy footsteps send vibrations through the ground, which are picked up by the trout's lateral lines. This will immediately alert them to your presence. Try to use available cover. If there's tall grass, shrubs, or trees, use them to hide your silhouette. Going hand in hand with this is the need to dress such that you blend in with the landscape. Do not wear bright shirts or anything will make you stand out. You have to dress like a hunter and often olive drab colors and any other earth tones will help you hide from being spotted. You want to blend in with the local topography. Also, try to use existing shadows cast by the sun if they're available. Trout will use shadows to hide, and so should we. Okay, Colin, well, I caught, uh, as I told you, we we're gonna take this pool in stages, and I fished the first stage about 15 feet, and now you're gonna, and I took the one at, at that stage, but there are several more at the next stage, let's say 15 to 25, so go ahead and uh, throw your hopper out there, stay close to the bank. One thing I've noticed, uh, this is something you just read about and don't see that often, but we actually have fish on both sides of this bank, jumping out of the water, hitting the grass to knock terrestrials into the pool and then eating them. So you're gonna to wanna to keep your fly 
real close to the bank, and I'll yeah, guarantee... Two, two to three feet. Grasshoppers become a favorite source of food for trout in the late summer and early fall. They peak in early September as the hoppers are mating and are often moving about quite a bit, which means they're falling into the water fairly consistently. Like regular hatches, grasshoppers fit into the normal food cycle for small stream trout in the West, and that is why fly fishers should carry a good assortment of hopper patterns in differing colors and sizes to match with local species. What's just happened, uh, Rich? We probably just saw this decent-sized brown, and he's been consistently coming up here and banging things off the grass. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to try and reach him. He's just tucked in against the bank there, and the camera won't be able to see it. But <laughs> okay, well. We get past there. We're in a good position. We'll shoot yeah. Yeah. Shoot. Make it easy for him. Oh, geez, that's perfect. If he doesn't take that... Oh, there, there, there a little you further up, a little further up, that's all. Work, you don't take, you bring it in slow, yeah. and don't rip it off the pool, because you'll scare these fish. I mean, brown cheddar are notoriously spooky. Yeah, there he is, he's still jumping on you, so. Okay. Well, that's a really good point. Um, Come on, this water is so clear, and so still, so flat on the top, that if you jerk your line off, you're going to scare him. And if you scare one, you scare most of them, maybe all of them. Oh, you got him, you got him, okay, nice, going, very nice. You had to put it right on top of his nose. Boy, what a picky fish this is. Nice going. That's not as big as yours, Jason. No, they're all nice, huh? Look at that fish. Want me to get them for you? Oh boy. Thanks. He's not that small, really. Oh, yeah. Yep. How's that for a Rocky Mountain or Wyoming trout? Okay. In terms of fly action, there are a couple of important points to understand. When a terrestrial falls into the water, its movements are usually relatively feeble. The current will usually give the insect most of its movement on the surface. So when you cast a hopper pattern or some other insect design into a pool, let it rest for a count of 5 to 10 seconds before you give it a slight twitch. And I do mean slight. Grasshoppers do not move 3 to 6 inches at a time on the water surface. Keep the movement slight. The vibration and surface rings coming off your presentation are usually enough to ring the dinner bell to any lurking trout. Oh, that's good. Oh, I told you, I told you. Oh, listen, you've got to be quick. You have to have a tighter line. He was waiting for your hand. Or oh, you got a hopper on now, I guess. Okay, down. well, that answers the hopper question. Oh, man, what a nice take that was. Oh, yes, yes. Colin, the problem we have here is that it's going to be almost impossible to fish upstream because we've got weeds on both sides. It's a very narrow channel, and the wind is blowing against us. So in this case, what you're going to have to do is just let out line, let it go down, down into that deep pool, down into that narrow slot, right behind that rock, 
and pull the big one out there. Okay. Just In terms of rod choices, I find a lot is determined based on where you're fly fishing. If I'm casting on a small stream in Maine, then I'll probably want a fairly short rod based on the relative height of the tree canopy. If I'm in a location where I can use a longer rod, such as here in Wyoming, then I'll use a longer rod. A longer rod will give me more casting choices. If I had to own only one small stream rod, I would probably get a seven and a half to eight foot long rod. In terms of line weight, a good overall choice is a four weight. I also like using some of the lighter two and three weight rods, but overall I like the four weight because it can do a lot in differing conditions, especially if the wind comes up. Most importantly, with the four weight in a double taper configuration, I can still make delicate presentations to wary trout, as well as cast bulky flies, such as hopper patterns or small streamers. Thank you. Boy, they hit those hoppers hard, don't they? Yeah, okay. Oh, you got one? Okay, there he is. Very nice. That guy was exactly he, he was exactly he was right the there. Yep, right in the shadow. And boy, isn't it? Look at him fight. What a fish. Let me get him for you. Yeah, bring him back where it's a little shallower. Good deal. <clears throat> Isn't he a beauty? Just had an incredible day of small stream fishing here at Whittle Creek Ranch. A little bit sunburned, definitely need some lemonade and something to eat. But I'll tell you, that was more fun than I can say. I love small stream fishing. If you get a chance, come here to Wyoming. Try one of these ranches like Whittle Creek Ranch. Phenomenal. You've got the fly fishing, you've got the recreational activities, the horse riding, everything. I mean, this is just incredible. What a holiday for anybody. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Do you want to learn more about this crazy and exciting world of fly fishing? Watch the other videos in the series and subscribe to the channel. The new fly fisher is made possible thanks to grants from R.L. Winston Fly Rod, Clackercraft, Islander Fly Reels, Water Skeeter, Scott Fly Rod, Frog Hair Products, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Loon Outdoors, Sage Fly Rods. Scientific Anglers, and viewers like you. To order a copy of your favorite New Fly Fisher episode, contact us at our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com or call us toll free at 1-877-529-0696. Copies of this educational series make an excellent gift for your favorite angler or friend and they also make a great addition to your reference library.
$14.95 for one VHS tape plus shipping and handling. Now also available on DVD.